Hi, my name is Michał Ambrożewicz. I am a solution architect at NetSprint. We are an online data-driven marketing company, um, a house of data, if you will. If you want uh, contextual advertising, behavioral uh, targeting, or profiling, you come to us. So today we will talk about Kubernetes. We have started our adventure with Kubernetes about two years ago, and now we are running uh, three clusters, uh, all of them on bare metal. Uh, this talk will be um, a summary of our experience uh, and closed in simple do's and don'ts. And uh, then we uh, sum it up with a priority checklist that will hopefully lead you to successful, your first successful cluster deployment. We don't have a lot of time, so let's start. First of all, you need to identify your workloads that you would like to put in your Kubernetes cluster. Your perfect candidates are stateless, horizontally scalable, loosely coupled, and by that I mean uh, HTTP or uh, some kind of message broker in between with clearly defined protocols and contract driven. Uh, that way your developers need to have only a basic set of, um, of Kubernetes entities understanding. Uh, let's say pods, replica set deployments, uh, config maps and services, and that's about everything they will need for starters. In other wor words, if you have uh, stateless mar microservices, you are good to go. Your next step should be securing assets for your sandbox. Uh, make sure it's as close to the production as uh, possible. Minikube is good for starters, but later on you will uh, need some kind of uh, almost production mirror. Um, mind uh, also the network environment. If you are uh, trying to run your sandbox in your private infrastructure and then you will deploy uh, production uh, to public data center, that's entirely two different things. Your next step should be creating a list of critical procedures. And by that, I mean deployment. Uh, which should consist of items like creating a new application, uh, deploying it, um, scaling it, uh, deploying a new version, and so on. Uh, maintenance, and by that I mean uh, creating cluster, scaling it, uh, removing a node for maintenance, reconnecting it again, and so on. And disaster recovery. By that I mean uh, not only uh, being prepared for a node failure, uh, especially a master node failure, th those are the worst, uh, but also be prepared um, with some kind of backup solution. Uh, there are solutions in the market that will allow you to backup your entire cluster as YAML files and uh, to put them uh, in a Git repository. Uh, so uh, watch out for uh, this ki uh, kind of solutions and make sure everyone on your team is trained to follow these procedures. <coughs> Next, monitoring is essential be uh, before you go to the production. Uh, you should choose a solution that allows you to monitor your pods and containers resor resources like CPU, RAM and network, that's a bare minimum. Um, we have been using Prometheus. Um, we have tried uh, Telegraph and Influx, but failed to, um, uh, to obtain uh, those uh, items from uh, pods and containers. You should also monitor your hardware. Uh, don't be full, uh, fooled if you um, run your workloads in the cloud. Um, still, a virtual machine uh, can drop out and you won't even know it. Uh, and you should also monitor your cluster status. Uh, you should check whether your cluster is uh, healthy and you should check whether uh, it is balanced. Make sure every pod has declared requests and limits. That is paramount. Uh, if I were to uh, 
limit this presentation to one single um, item, this would be uh, this item. Uh, without it, uh, there's nothing that stands between you and over-provisioning. Um, if you write your cluster uh, on the edge and the node fails and you have no limits and requests declared, declared um, nodes that were, um, pods that were lo lost will be recreated on another node, will deplete your resources, be kill will be killed off, recreated on another node, and so on and so on until your cluster fails. So, uh, have in mind and make sure everyone on your teams understand this. Uh, next, liveness and uh, health probes. Uh, do not mistake them for the same thing. Uh, make sure everyone on your team understands the difference and uh, make sure all of uh, your application um, have uh, them correctly um, implemented. Metrics and um, finding limits for CPU and RAM. Uh, don't guess, don't estimate, always check. Here you can uh, see plot uh, for two pods. As you can see, one is riding steadily with a ceiling of about four gigabytes of RAM. The other one is uh, suspected for a memory leak. Without monitoring, you won't even know and uh, you will end up in a situation where pods are killed with no apparent reason. Perform load testing for your applications before you deploy them to the production. Um, even if uh, they have previously been run in uh, different environments, Kubernetes, especially uh, when you run it uh, in uh, public data center can introduce you to non-deterministic la latencies, network problems, and so on. So uh, be uh, prepared to uh, handle them, and uh, only load tests uh, will tell you if your application is still performing well. Next question is security. Uh, I would suggest using role-based access control. Uh, assigned each of your team members individual tokens uh, and uh, the same applies uh, to exter external processes like uh, continuous integration server and so on. Rotate them accordingly. Um, limit your SSH access to your cluster to essential personnel only. The others should connect to the cluster through a, sec a secured API endpoint. Uh, you will also have to train your team to use local kubectl to access that endpoint. Next uh, question is uh, exposing your services. You will have to have a really good reason not to use Ingress. Uh, it might be hard uh, in the beginning, uh, but uh, you will find uh, that uh, Ingress uh, is the way to go. We have been using successfully traffic with uh, Let's Encrypt. Um, its seamless integration allows us uh, to create uh, secured um, endpoints automatically. While we're at the automation, consider continuous integration and delivery your first investment. Uh, we have been using uh, GitLab uh, pipelines. Uh, with them, we can deploy our applications with a single click of a button. Consider separating testing from production. Uh, that seems obvious, uh, but uh, has uh, some quirks in it. Um, you could say that it's enough to just label your nodes production and staging or, or testing or something like that. Uh, and you are fine to go, but uh, have in mind uh, that uh, this doesn't provide you any kind of network separation, uh, and still all of your pods uh, talk to the same control plane. Uh, so if you, let's say, uh, run a stress test uh, through your uh, staging pods, your production can also be affected. Now for a couple of don'ts. Uh, avoid manual operations on live cluster. Use scripts, use Ansible. We have been using Kube Spray for a while, and it works like a charm. Uh, do not use 
try not to use anything that's not repeatable and you cannot check, in your, uh, check it in your sandbox first. Kubernetes doesn't imply uh, cloud. <coughs> we have been running uh, clusters uh, on bare metal from the beginning. Uh, and, uh, well, there were some issues, but it saved us a lot of money. So if you are fine with uh, scalability like a uh, new server within 24 hours, uh, you're good to go uh, with dedicated servers, let's say, in Hetzner. Uh, like we do. Uh, it saved us uh, a lot of money. Uh, you, might, you might also be fine with uh, on-premise on, uh, or colocation, uh, and uh, it can still be good for you to benefit from other Kubernetes feature, features. Um, <coughs> you know the saying about an elephant, how to eat an elephant? Well, the same um, applies to Kubernetes. Um, identify and master only the components that are crucial for your deployment. Um, if you start with ser stateless microservices, you probably don't need distributed storage or persistent sets. Uh, you, in the beginning, you maybe don't even need auto-scaling. Do not use primitive entities, and by that I mean uh, don't create a herd of unmanaged pods uh, instead of creating a deployment, let's say. Next are the network issues. Remember that if you run your Kubernetes cluster within, uh, especially uh, within public data center, uh, you might be uh, introduced to non-deterministic latencies, network problems, and you don't have even rudimentary control over uh, what's going uh, on with the network. Uh, so make sure that your application can handle uh, it. Uh, another question is uh, firewall. Uh, if you are on-premise or in cloud, you are probably good with uh, standard solutions. But if you're going to the public data center, uh, you should check out beforehand uh, if you can secure your uh, network. Remember that the Kubernetes uh, relies heavily on uh, IP tables, and uh, you might not be able to create your standard firewall as uh, you always do. Don't be afraid of chaos engineering, and by that I mean you might be forced occasionally uh, to kill a node, restart a faulty Docker daemon, restart a kubelet, um, even to kill off some of healthy uh, pods just to uh, trigger a cluster rebalance. Don't be afraid to do that. Kubernetes should handle that without problem. Do not rely on a single master. Uh, that one's obvious, uh, but the other one is not so obvious. Do not use even number of master, masters. Uh, it gives you nothing compared to uh, a scenario when you have one master less. Don't forget about maintenance. Kubernetes, for instance, uh, uses a um, multitude of uh, security certificates. Make sure you rot rotate them before they expire. Uh, you should also address uh, all of the hardware issues when they are arise. Uh, don't let them become a bigger problem later. Now, a quick priority checklist. Isolate your components uh, for uh, Kubernetes, dockerize them, choose your uh, CI CD solution, um, and secure your Docker image repository. If you are running in GitLab, you're in luck. They provide you with one for free. Next, create a sandbox and prepare maintenance procedures for, um, for, ma uh, procedures for maintenance and emergency. Uh, train uh, your teams to follow them. Separate, consider separating st staging from production. Prepare monitoring for infrastructure and apps. Perform load tests and tune your requests and limits accordingly. Then you can go live. Good luck and thank you. <laughs>